Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing an elephant in acrylic and I'm doing him in really nice bright colours and I wanted to talk through the importance of sometimes just having a play with your paints and drawing with your paints and not doing a pencil drawing to begin with. So to start off I'll just tell you the materials that I'm using. So this is the second painting I've done in this new Faber-Castell mixed media pad. I did a review on this a week or so ago and I'll pop the link to that up in the corner and this was to replace my last mixed media pad and it's just an A4 one, acid free and I think there's about 30 sheets in there and I'm quite liking it. So we tried it the other day, we did, let me think, we did a cow and we used Derwent Ink Tens so today I thought we'd have a change and use some acrylic paints. So the acrylic paints that I'm using are the Liquitex soft body paints that we had a go with the other day, we did a bluebell Again, I'll put the link to that in the description below as well if you didn't see that Bluebell one with these um, soft bodied acrylics. I'm using quite a bit of water with them today. Um, I didn't use as much water with them the last time I used them. And this paper stood up quite well to having all that water on it. In fact, it was, you know, it's fine. It's, it's a really nice paper. I'm liking it so far. Even though I've only done two things on it, I, I do like it. So the only other thing I used apart from that paper and the Liquitex was right at the end I put some highlight and line in um, just to emphasise some of the lines and the shapes of this elephant's skin with um, a pit pen and it was the white Faber-Castell um, artist pen and it's white 101, I presume 101 is the size, it's quite a thick one so you might be able to get finer ones, I don't know. Right, so one thing I really wanted to talk about was, like I said, the importance of sometimes just having a play with your colours and not doing a pencil drawing to start with. So I'm only using the three primary colours and white and just mixing them on the plate. So using lots of oranges, mixing the yellow and red together and quite a few mauves, mixing the red and the blue together and adding quite a bit of white to those as well to make it nice and light. We don't want it too dark. So nice, keep some nice bright colours. So I used quite a mid-tone just to draw the elephant in and he's not perfect first time and the good thing and we're about this and we were talking about this in class this morning is when you just set off and paint, especially with acrylics where it's easy to correct your mistakes, it makes you look more because you think well actually that doesn't just look right just there, I've got that a little bit wrong and then you alter your lines and you keep correcting yourself as you go along um, and it makes you observe and you, and you keep checking your measurements and you keep thinking well should that eye be lined up with that mouth and that ear and where does that line up etc I think sometimes when we do a pencil drawing to begin with we tend to stick very rigidly to that drawing afterwards especially as beginners we, we spend some time getting our pencil drawing what we think is right and if there's a mistake in the measuring and it's not quite right we have this tendency to just stick to that drawing and just a sort of like paint by numbers we're filling we're coloring in once we've done the pencil drawing we're filling in those colors into that drawing that we've done and we tend not to correct correct ourselves as much whereas when we just go for it relax a little bit just set off with like I did a plate with the three primaries and your white on and just one or two nice brushes you'll see I've got um, flat brushes because with a flat brush you can get quite thick, different, different lines so you can use the end to get a nice thin line and then you can use the side but also it means you're not getting too fiddly you're not getting too much into the detail you're just keeping it nice and loose so a nice a flat brush is a good one to go for just have those few colours on your plate and just go for it and keep correcting yourself as you go along keep standing back a little and thinking well, something doesn't look just quite right what have I got wrong measure the ear, measure the eye in line to each other etc. I think I've probably got the trunk a little bit wide but it doesn't actually matter it still looks like an elephant it's not a problem and I'm not worrying about the colours being realistic because as we said before last week I can't think what we were talking about which subject we were doing but we were talking about how as long as the form is correct and the tones are correct if we use different colours it's still gonna look like a convincing picture so don't forget when we're um, making a picture that that's what we're doing we're making our own picture we're not slavishly copying a photograph if we wanted to do that we should, could just go out with our camera we're making a picture so don't be afraid to use wild colours colours that wouldn't be realistic as long as you've got the form right and the tone right um, it will look convincing so by tone I mean the lights and the darks so look very carefully at where the darkest areas are on the picture 
and where the, the lightest areas are. And when you put the two together, the very lightest and the very darkest, that gives us a nice contrast. So contrast is something else that you should be looking for in your paintings. So as well as the, as the contrast between light and dark, which you'll see most at the end where his ear is, We've also got some nice contrasts of line. So like I say, if you use the edge of your brush, you get uh, a quite a thin line. Use the side of your brush, you get a thicker line. And you'll also see that I allow the brush to run out of paint. And then you get this um, dry brush technique as well. So when you, we use curved lines, we use straight lines, and getting all those different lines in is going to make it a much more interesting, exciting painting. Um, than just using all the same technique all the time. So sometimes just get a big piece of paper and your different brushes that you've got, maybe your favourite brushes, and just try and have a do a full sheet of getting different lines, moving your arm, getting some nice curves, getting some nice long strokes, some shorter strokes, um, twist your brush as you go so that you're getting some interest. And something like an elephant's perfect for this because he's got all that texture in his skin. So another way you could have got the texture in would be to use some wax resist underneath as well. So when, I, when it comes to the end and I'm putting the white pen on, I'm not just using it for highlights. I'm also using it just to sharpen up the form a little bit in places as well. Um, his eye is a bit tricky because with an elephant you don't see the pupil of the eye really. Um, so you're not getting as much character maybe as you would in some other animals. And they're very small in comparison to everything else. The shape of his mouth's quite tricky, he's sort of... Um, got two parts to his mouth where it's where you can see on the picture later on where I'm struggling a little bit with that so that I needed the shadow to come a little bit further up so like I say with acrylics unlike watercolors you can alter that all the time you can think well that's wrong I'm going to alter it and it's not a problem so that's why we really need to just have a go at loosening up and uh, just having a bit of fun because painting should be fun and if you're too uptight about it, that's going to show in your painting. If you're relaxed and having fun, that's going to come through in your finished artwork. And there's usually a way we can solve problems as well. If something's wrong, there's usually a way we can correct it. So I think that's probably about everything uh, I've got to tell you. Um, like I say, don't just use the white for highlights. Use it to sharpen up some of those details. But with something like an animal, keep the detail to the eye and the mouth usually. That's where the character is. And leave the rest of it quite loose if you can. The background's very loose. That was just that dark green. I could perhaps have gone a little bit darker with that. Actually, it might look nice just to pop, pop out a bit more against those white lines. Um, if we made the background a bit darker, even nearly black would be. So I hope you found that useful. If you have any comments or questions, if you want to put those down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. The reference photograph itself was off Pixabay and I'll pop that link as well in the description below, as well as links to those uh, two other videos that I mentioned about this uh, Faber-Castell paper and the Liquitex soft body acrylic paint. So, and like I said, with the three colours, um, you know, you don't need to go out and buy every colour that um, so any all the brands have to offer because there's just so many colours that we can spend an absolute fortune. Just set off as a beginner with your three primaries and some white and you'll be able to mix some lovely colours to get a, a nice painting. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, enjoy the rest of the video. I'll put a picture of the finished thing right at the end uh, and bye for now and hopefully see you again soon.